Don't be in a, in a race to finish something. Sometimes you got to meditate on God's Word. Sometimes you read a chapter and the next day you got to go back and reread it again. Prayer is our connection to omnipotence. That's why we need to pray. If people don't pray, if Christians don't pray, what is that saying? Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your presence here with us, O oh God. Thank you for your promises, O oh God. Lord, we never have to doubt whether you're here or not, O oh God. We just, Lord, as long as we invite you in, we know you're here, Father. God, we pray that you continue to be with us, O oh Lord God, even as we're about to open up your word, Lord Jesus. Lord, speak to us, O oh God. Holy Spirit, reveal your word to us. Holy Spirit, prompt our hearts. Quicken us, O oh God. Lord, turn our cold hearts, O oh Lord God, into hearts after you, Lord Jesus. We bless your name, O oh God. Father, we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. Well, I want to talk to you about needs tonight. Everyone has needs and those needs vary from person to person and from family to family no matter if you have a lot or a little everyone has needs and everyone is driven by those needs people are driven by their needs in addition they're driven by what they think they need in addition to that they're driven by what they want but we all have needs. And today I want to talk to you about your need to need things. Amen. I want to talk to you about something that is so, so true that can keep us. And it's about our need to need God. Our need to need God. The most vital need that you have is your need of God. That's the first thing I want to tell you tonight. The most vital need that you and I have is our need of God. In Psalm 100, verse 3, the psalmist says this, Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Did you ever stop and meditate and think about the fact that God made us and that we belong to him? Do you consciously walk through life thinking about that? Because many of us act like we own ourselves. You do own yourself if you have not given your life over to the Lord Jesus Christ. But if you've given your life over to the Lord Jesus Christ, you've given ownership of yourself, you know, I was thinking about, I, I'm not good at selling things. I'm terrible. I'm a terrible salesman. I'll just give stuff. I'd rather give stuff away than sell it. And, and I can't sell something that I think is not right, you know, that's a piece of junk. Some people can sell a piece of junk and sell it for a lot of money, and they're not embarrassed, right? But I can't sell anything that I don't think is, like, 100% good. I can't talk somebody and try to convince them that something's good when I know it's not good. And I was thinking about the Lord. And he purchased us. As far as I'm concerned, he didn't get a bargain with me. He paid a high price for me. And all he got was this. So... I am his. I don't know why he wants me, but I'm so glad he does. Because what I did with me was not so good. How about you? I, I gladly transferred ownership of myself to God. Because what he does with me is so much greater than what I could ever do with myself. In Colossians chapter 1, verses 16 and 17, some of my favorite portions of scripture here for in him 
in who? In Jesus. All things were created. Things in heaven and on earth. Visible and invisible. Whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities. All things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things and in him all things hold together. We need him because we were created for him. How many say amen? amen? We can't get away from it. Psalm 40, 17. But as for me, I am poor and needy. May the Lord think of me. You are my help and my deliverer. You are my God. Do not delay. Did you know that the most vital thing you need is not what you think. It's God. You need a, a firmer relationship with God. That's the most important thing that you and I need. You need Jesus because you were made for a relationship with Jesus. That's, if you're breathing, that's the main purpose of why you're breathing. God made you for a relationship with him. Not to uh, have a great job and make a lot of money and get a lot of stuff that you're going to leave behind in a little bit. But it's to cultivate a relationship with him. Amen? Without Jesus, all the things that you have will not last. All you have are things that won't last. I don't, I, you know, when, when you stop to think about the temporary and the eternal and what we trade off, it is so insane because without Jesus, what do you have? What do I have without Christ? Things that rot away. What does life consist of? Life is more than just, I, I really don't know how people who don't know Jesus do it. I don't know how they get up every day and are motivated. I know a lot of people medicate or, or, or you know, they get something to, I guess, not think about the the like the uh, like Solomon said the insaneness of life it doesn't make any sense without God but thank God that God is real and that Jesus Christ saved us and and gave us a, a picture of why we're here without Jesus in your life nothing's going to satisfy your soul how many have found that we've tried just about everything haven't we and nothing satisfies your soul. Without Jesus, you can't do anything of any eternal value. That's why he said, without me, you can do nothing. So your most vital need that you and I have is a relationship with God. It's our need of God. The next thing I want to tell you is that the last thing that we realize is our need of God. We really think that our problems are other than our need for God. Romans 3, 10 and 11 gives us a picture of where a lot of people are. Well, where all of us are. It says that as it is written, there is no one righteous, not even uno. There is no one who understands. There is no one who seeks God. Because of our sinful nature, our sinful nature rejects the thought of needing God. We feel that we need other things, and we get all anxious about our thought of needing something, even something that we don't really need. I need a new car. I need a new, I need a bigger house. You have a house. You have a roof over your head. I need a bigger one. And you get all anxious about that. But no one thinks, I need more of God, which is what you really need. Amen? Many dismiss their need of God. Even people who are professing Christians don't seem to know that they absolutely need God for their lives. 
they have God as sort of some uh, religious obligation that they have to fulfill to take care of whatever little guilt they have so they can go on with their lives. God is an obligation to take care of that spiritual part so that you can live your physical part and, and you know, that's taken care of. Where our need is for to give God everything that we are. And if we don't, we're, we're, we're not going to get anywhere. We're not, we're, we're not going to get the essence of life and we're not going to be satisfied. We need God. And the last thing that we think of is our need of God. By the way, here's the truth for you. It is the needs that you cannot meet that remind you or make you aware of your need of God. Right? When do we start thinking about God? When you have a need that you can't take care of yourself. Psalm 77, starting in verse 1, says this, I cried out to God for help. I cried out to God to hear me. When I was in distress, I sought the Lord. When did the psalmist seek the Lord? When he was in distress, when he got in trouble. And he goes on, at night I stretched out my untiring hands. Untiring hands because he, he was in distress. How about lifted hands to bless God just because? Do we have untiring hands then? Oh, but we're in trouble. Our hands are strong to, to raise them to God, to get hope. I would not be comforted. Then verse 3, I remembered you, God. Oh, you did, did you? You remembered God because you were in distress. But you know what? God is so merciful that he'll receive that. As a matter of fact, it's your need that reminds you that you need God. 1 Peter 1, verses 6 and 7. And all this you greatly rejoice, though, for now, for a little while, you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith, faith in who? Faith in Jesus of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. These have come. What have come? Grief in all kinds of trials. Oh, well, wait a minute. You mean they come on purpose? Oh, yeah. You don't want to hear that. But that's the truth. Because if they wouldn't come, then the genuineness of our faith wouldn't be proven. And we would not think about God. Just like the psalmist. When I was in distress, I sought the Lord. God is so faithful and merciful that he allows us to need him. He does that through problems, through circumstances, through situations that make us desperate enough to seek him. It's his mercy that does that. I've seen God's mercy in some very, very serious situations where somebody uh, really, uh, their life is on the line. And it's God's mercy because if that person's life wasn't on the line, they wouldn't turn to God. And, and let me just say something very, very, very serious. That even if that person loses his life here but finds God, that's the mercy of God. Because the Bible tells us, and it's so true, what does it profit a person or what does it benefit anyone to gain the whole world, or to live to 120 years, but lose their soul in eternity. How many agree and say amen? amen. Very weakly you do. We don't want to 
go through those things. But a lot of times it's our needs that cannot be met by ourselves that make us aware of God, that drive us to God, that makes us aware of our need of God. Timmy, if you'd come. Here's what I want to close with. I want you to think about this and ponder this in your heart. Your needs that we complain about, we, listen, we don't really like to need anything. We would rather have everything that we need and just rest. Right? Like that guy that the Bible talks about that had a lot of stuff, so much stuff, he wanted to build another barn to store it all. He goes, well, now, you know, I have it all, and I'll just be able to just sit back and enjoy everything that I've piled up. And the Bible says that God said, you fool, tonight your soul is required. You're not even going to get to touch any of that stuff. Your needs keep you needing God, which keeps you seeking him. Don't be so upset that you're so needy. Because if you weren't, if you and I weren't, we might be in a lot of trouble. You know, when the Israelites finally got to the point, it took them 40 years because they were so stubborn. When they were at the point of finally crossing over the Jordan River to get to the promised land, God reminded them of something and warned them of something. He said in Deuteronomy chapter 8, when you get into the land and you are fully, you have eaten and are fully satisfied, when you are in your comfortable houses, which by the way, you did not build, and when you settle down, and when your herds and flocks grow and your silver and gold increases, don't forget the Lord your God. Because he said your heart will become proud and you will forget the Lord your God. God uses our needs to keep us close to him. Let me tell you something. You will never know that God is all you need until God is all you've got. When it looks like the bottom has dropped out, and I have lived through that, where everything that you thought you were relying on is gone, And it seems like the bottom has dropped out of your life. And all you've got is God. And that's when you realize that that's all you need. By the way, when the bottom drops out of a follower of Christ's life, you don't drop through because he places his hand there so you don't fall. But it does make you realize a lot of things about life. It changes the way you were looking at things. We all have to learn that lesson. And it's not an easy one. Psalm 23, the famous psalm. David said this in verse 4. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, that's the need. The need is I am in a very, very dark valley. And here comes the answer. I will not be afraid for you are close beside me. The need, walking through a dark valley. Well, why do I have to walk through a dark valley at all? Also, that I can experience and I can seek God and have him close to me so that I can learn that even when I walk through a dark valley, as long as God is with me, it's okay. It's like being in the light. Your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. You know, think about it. God could have spared Joseph from jail and from being sold into slavery. He could have spared Daniel from going into the lion's den. 
He could have spared David from having to run and hide in caves from King Saul. After all, Samuel, the prophet, anointed David as king. But David still had to run in the wilderness and hide in caves. He could have spared him from that. He could have spared the three Hebrew boys from actually having to go in the furnace. He could have spared them before that, but he didn't. He could have spared the Apostle Paul all the hardships that he went through, being flogged I don't know how many times and being shipwrecked three times. But he didn't. Because if he had, these men wouldn't be who they were. And they would never have been able to accomplish what they accomplished. It was because they needed God so much that they learned to trust him. They learned that they needed him at every turn. They couldn't do life without him. That's true for every single one of us. We really can't do life without him, but we certainly do try, don't we? And we all have stories about trying to do life without God. It's so hard to learn that we need him at every turn. You know, when you think of your life, especially in light of eternity, Jesus is not all that you need. He really is all that you have. Let me, let me be honest with you. At the end of the day, when we're about to take our last breath, the only thing that will matter is your relationship with Jesus. Nothing else. Nothing else. Not your bank account. Not your house. Really, to be honest, not even your family because you're going to stand before God alone. And we, we're going to have to answer for how we lived our lives here on this earth. The most important thing in this life is our relationship with Jesus. He is the most vital thing that we need. I pray that that God makes that real to all of us. You know, the way this works, I'm learning, is that the more I live, the more I need him. I don't need him any more, any less now because I figure things out in life or, you know, I know how to do this now. <laughs> you know, I know how to pray now. I, I, I know how to read my word. I've learned some disciplines. I learned about myself, what to watch out for. I know my weaknesses, and I know that if I don't cling to Jesus, I'll get in trouble. I know all of those things. But each day that I live, I feel my need of him more and more. You know, the Bible says when Jesus, who is your life, appears, we will appear with him in glory. Jesus means to be our very life. Because without him, guess what? There is no life. Why? He is the life. He is the way. He's the truth. And he's the life. And if you have Christ living in you, that's why you have life. I'm not talking about physical life. I'm talking about eternal life. Life that's not going to waste away. Amen? You know, uh, I, uh, I feel that we just need to pray. We need to pray. Our church needs more of God. We need more of Jesus. And we live in a day where, uh, I don't know, uh, Christians have, 
you, you would think that with the darkness coming, it reminds me of what Jesus warned about. You know, make sure there's oil in your lamps. So when the bridegroom comes, you'll be ready, right? But people are living as though he's not coming back. And the way I'm seeing things, it looks pretty dicey in the world. And the things that God said is going to happen are starting to happen. We live in the craziest times that I, could, I would have never imagined living in in this era where people are believing it and saying the things that they do. And the whole world system is going along with it. So we need more of Jesus. If we're going to survive this until Jesus comes or until we go home to be with him if, if he tarries. We need Jesus. We need him more and more, not less and less. You know what? Let's pray that. Pray for each other. Pray for this church. I really, you know, if all we're going to do is have church and, and nothing's going to change, then I'd rather Jesus just take me home. Really. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. Jesus is too awesome. For us to just sit here and stay the same and not be transformed and changed and not to see people grow and have fruit and, and, and fall in love with Jesus like never before. I, I don't want him to come here and say, you know what, I'm taking my lampstand. So would you help me pray tonight? Let's pray for each other. Find some prayer partners, men with men and women with women. And let's pray that we will realize our need of God. Pray for our church, too. That God would, would just come in new ways and have, we need breakthroughs. Just, just my heart to your heart. Amen? But God is faithful. God is faithful to do it if we ask and pray. Amen? Let's go to prayer and ask God. Let's pray for a little while and ask God to make us realize our need of him and, and to Pray for more and more of him. Amen.